Are you thinking about going out and shooting some photos of the stars? Well, you've came to the right video. Are you trying to go out and take photos of the stars, but you kind of don't really want to because eh, you have no idea what to do? I've got a little bit of information that could help you about camera settings, uh, equipment, where you need to be, what you need to know. So let's go ahead and dive right into this and I'm gonna try to bang this out as quick as possible. So the first thing that will affect your photos at night would be the moon. So you need to figure out where it's gonna be at in the sky and how much of it there is in the sky. For example, if it's a crescent moon or a wanning moon or whatever they call it, if it's 2% moon, probably not a problem. If it's 50% or more, it's gonna light up your photos kind of like the sun does. So get an app, there's tons out there. You just want it to tell you when the moon is rising, when it's setting, and how much percent there is. And you're gonna have to play with this a little bit as far as where it is in the sky because as it drops lower, it's gonna impact less or if you, it sets behind a mountain and you're shooting the other way. Just know that that's a thing. Be aware of the moon and where it is because if it's a full moon, probably not even a good night to go out and take photos of the stars. If you want photos of the Milky Way, then you're gonna need to know what time of year it's best, because there's a core of the Milky Way. And if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, months are gonna be July. July is the, the best month where the core shows, but it's pretty much gonna be from spring to fall. And then in the Southern Hemisphere, same with the seasons, your spring to your fall. And then you're gonna want to get to a very dark spot. The darker the ambient city lights are, the less stars are gonna show. Get to a dark spot and then uh, face south. That's where the Milky Way is gonna be. There are apps out there. I think there's one called Dark Sky Maps to refer to where the dark areas are, where there's less city ambient light emitting into the sky to help you. So find a dark spot and face south. You're gonna wanna switch your camera to manual mode. I know some of you shoot in auto. I wouldn't recommend that ever. Go ahead and switch to manual because chances are you're gonna learn. You're gonna screw up your photo. You're gonna have to adjust but I'm gonna give you the settings anyway. So go ahead and switch it to manual because that's what you're gonna need to have it on in order to switch your settings the way you want them anyway. You're gonna need your camera to have a interchangeable lens, perhaps one with a lower aperture, like a low number, like 1.8. Also, then you're gonna want to have your aperture on the widest open setting, which is typically the lowest number, not typically, it always is the lowest number. If it's f1.8, you're gonna wanna shoot at f1.8, preferably a wide angle lens so that you can get a lot in your shot, such as foreground, and then the stars but a 50 millimeter will work it's just not going to allow you to take as long of a photo for example you're going to have to shoot i think at 10 seconds maximum just because of the way it works the good rule here is the 500 rule the 500 rule is a good rule for your exposure length and so you take 500 you divide your focal length of your lens you're using and then you get the amount of seconds you can shoot for now i like to take that number and kind of go a little less just because what happens is if you go over that number chances are those stars stars are going to show up like an oval because what it is is the star trail starting to make a trail because you know as we move those stars are going to streak in your photos and you don't want that obviously or you do and then your stars look weird but i would recommend shooting under the 500 rule just by a little just to be safe shoot in raw focusing on the stars it's probably going to be the hardest thing you encounter hopefully your camera can handle well in low light that helps for all purposes for shooting the stars but generally just because it's going to show up black and so if you have a photo mode and a video mode switch to video mode just temporarily and rev your iso all the way up so that way you can see a star all you really need is a star or if the moon's out focus on the moon but switch to uh, manual focus and then just slowly dial in that star so that it's not really a blur it's a sharp point and then from there, don't touch your focus again for the rest of the night. If you don't have a video mode, just temporarily raise your ISO settings to the max and then try to look for the brightest star in the sky. Put your camera on that brightest star, zoom in, focus. White balance. I see a lot of people screwing that up just because if you have it on auto white balance, chances are you were shooting in the day landscapes, which is great to have on auto. But then when you transition to the night, you leave it on auto, but then every once in a while you get a weird green or aqua colors in the sky. That's not accurate. So you're gonna wanna adjust settings to Kelvin units and then put it at 4,000. That's generally a good balance to have in the middle because if you're shooting raw, then when you're editing these photos later, you're at a better middle point to adjust warmer or colder from there. And so just the safest thing to do is shoot 4,000 Kelvins.
You're gonna want your ISO at probably 2,000 to 4,000. At least that's what I would recommend. My camera, once I get to 10,000 ISO, starts pushing it as far as noise goes. And so if you're gonna want less noise in your photos, try to keep that number low, but obviously bright. So that's why I say 2,000 to 4,000 is probably your safest bet. And then sometimes if you want better contrast in the stars, try experimenting with taking your ISO down, but exposure up. And then if that doesn't work, sometimes try to take your ISO higher, but then exposure shorter. Because sometimes the stars are bright and then you might take advantage of that by doing so. But just experiment, but know that 3000 is probably a good starting point. So to recap, rather than watching this whole video, I'm gonna go ahead and cover the screen. Here's all the settings you need to know. Go ahead and screenshot this. And then when you're out in the wild, in the middle of nowhere with no data, you can just refer to your screenshot. Boom, there you go. All right, that's all I have for you. So hopefully that was enough information to get you inspired and get you out there to take photos. Enjoy, have fun, take care. You're just not gonna be able to take as long as a photo of long of a, you're just not gonna be able to take as long as a, why can't I not say that? So screw that all up. <sighs> you're, it's pretty telephoto. You're, you're, what do they call that? A 50 millimeter. But it's not gonna allow you to take a, a long photo, like long, longer. <laughs> but you're just not gonna be able to take a long, as long of. Settings are probably the, if it's a dark photo, you're doing something wrong. <laughs>